here. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited to have you here with me today for my video, How to Become Happier and More Positive, four tips you can use in the first month to gain happiness. And I am very excited to be presenting my son Colin to you during this video. He actually bought this wonderful book for me and several other people in the family a couple of Christmases ago. It is by Dr. Lance Parker, PhD, who is a psychologist who happens to be from Wichita. The book is called 212 How to Transform Your Mind. And Colin had great results in boosting his happiness reading this book, as did I. And I thought that since the purpose of my channel is to help us live a better second half, there was no better way to do that than to introduce you to Dr. Parker's wonderful book and the four happiness principles it contains. And for those of you who aren't that familiar with psychology, Dr. Lance Parker is a cognitive behavioral therapist. And basically he believes that we can use certain tools to kind of transform our lives and our happiness. He calls them the four fundamentals and I'll be trying to impart them to you today along with my son Colin who has been very helpful by them. Now, before I get into the fundamentals, there is one overriding piece of information that I think was very, very important. And that is no matter where you are in life, no matter how happy you are, you control your own happiness. You are responsible for your own life. Now, at first that might sound kind of cruel and you would say, well, this happened and this happened and this happened. I have no control over that. But looking back, I think you will see that some of your decisions led you to the exact place you are right now. And the thing that is wonderful to me about that, at first I thought, wait, I'm responsible if I'm not happy? Well, in a way that sounds negative, but it also sounds very powerful. Because if I actually control my own happiness, my own thoughts, my own situation, then I also have the power to change all of those things, which is just wonderful. It took me so long to, to get this. Did you get it right away or, and, and how did it impact I your life? It took practice. You get the principles like right off the bat, but understanding it is the easy part. Yeah. Making it your habit of thought is the hard part. You just make an effort. You just do it as long as it takes to be like natural. Now, Dr. Parker's first fundamental is you can only control yourself, what you think, say, and do, and you have no control over other people. But number one takes care of, for me, like probably 80% of my thought struggles. You know, I manage people at work. You know, we all interact with people. Yeah. <laughs> <throughout the> day. <laughs> and recognizing that you can't control people is, you know, just lifts a huge weight off your shoulder. So how do you manage them though if you don't think you can control them? You can tell them what you want. Yeah. And oftentimes we have conversations with people without them present. We just have conversations yeah. in our mind about, yeah. well, if I said this, well then she would definitely do this and, <laughs> and that would be terrible and I would do this. And the thing is like your brain doesn't know the difference. Your brain is going through that conversation. If you become angry during that conversation, if it were real, you'd probably become angry in your head too. It's just wasted, wasted energy, energy making yourself angry. And as the book relates, you can't control the past. The past is finished. Yeah, basically, you can only control this moment in time. You can't control the future as much as we like, <laughs> like to think we can. Uh, we can influence the future, of course. We can make good decisions to put us on the path that we want. Yeah but we can't control the future. We certainly can't control the past. We can't control others. I can't make you mad or happy. Only you can do that. I can't make you do anything. Only you can do that. But on the flip side, you can't make me happy or sad. You can't control my thoughts. Only I can do that. It makes it very easy to interact with people mm -hmm. because you can be more direct. That doesn't mean you're a jerk. It just means you can be direct. You don't have to consider how this would make them feel in oh, every different wow. way. Wow, wow, wow. Because you have no power over that. You yeah, know, how course. they feel is their own deal. Yeah, you know, what if I said it this way or how would they take it, blah, blah, blah. Well, you have no control over that. Just yeah. say what you mean and what you want. It's up it to them. It doesn't matter. Like, hey, so-and-so at work, I really want you to do this. Well, what if it's something they don't want or whatever and they're, they're pissy? It's like, I have no control over that. I can just tell them what I want them to do. Period. You know? And that's just that easy. Yeah. You don't have to debate in your head for 
for a, an evening yeah. <laughs> so that you can go in and tell your, your boss what you want them to do or, or whatever. And fundamental one is so important to me as a mom and changing my thinking in this area has really helped me. I used to think that I had to control my children's happiness. I had this misguided idea that maybe I could control their happiness. And I have two boys. They are successful adults. One of them is married. Colin is in a relationship right now. They're doing well, but I always just worried and worried about their happiness. And it was such a relief to me. It just felt like oh, relief. I do not control their happiness. I really have very little say in their lives anymore. I mean, up until they're 18, you do have more control, but once they're grown adults, you really have no more control over that. And Dr. Parker says what we can control is really only ourself. And when you think about it, if you get your sister-in-law off your list, if you get your kids off your list, even if you get your husband, your spouse, your significant other off your list, if, if your list just includes yourself, it's kind of a relief because you don't have to be God. You don't have to control the world. All you have control over is yourself. You can control specifically this present moment. I, I can also control my thoughts and feelings in the present moment. In fact, Shakespeare once said, there is nothing good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. In other words, it doesn't matter if it's a good or bad situation. It is your perception, your thinking about that situation that actually makes it either positive or negative. And I really believe that. So you can control yourself, your own thoughts and your own feelings, and you can also control what you do. Now, Dr. Parker's fundamental two is no more should statements, no more should statements. And these are statements like, oh, I should lose weight. I should work out more, that kind of thing. And he says that there is no happiness in the word should. Basically, in that example, like I should work out more. If you don't do it, you feel lousy about yourself because you should have worked out. And if you do work out, there's no happiness in that because, well, I should have worked out. I did what I should have done. So there's no happiness boost at all. I, I put it just there is no should. Yeah. <laughs> there is no should. So you'll find like, you know, number two, there are words like should have to, need to. Those are phrasing in your thoughts. Hearing those phrases, those words, I just said this in my head. Okay, maybe that's a thought that isn't positive. And also if someone else is, they should do something, well, you can't control them again, right? Yeah. But really you prefer that they do something. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it sounds like semantics, but if you do that all the time and that's your natural uh, train of thought it's amazing how your happiness changes and like these problems that used to be you know controlling your life are just non-existent anymore what? society says you should go do these other things you should go to college you should make tons of money and blah 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 but if you're just doing things for yourself there is no should you know whatever makes you happy do that but uh, what happens if you get all fat and depressed because you're sitting on the couch. Well, most people want to be healthy and yes. make good decisions. They want to save for retirement. They want to do all these things. Yeah. And those things you want to do, you're not thinking about it as I should do this because X, Y, and Z, but I want to do this. Dr. Parker says that if you hear the words coming out of your mouth, should, have to, need to, that kind of thing, you should turn it around and ask yourself, what is it I want to do? Instead, if you change things to a preference, then you can actually turn it into a positive. And like, if it, if it's someone else should have done this, Hey, I would have preferred my boss said, good job. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, he didn't and I can't I control would have preferred it. it. Yeah. And it sounds like, it, like what the heck, how is that a big deal? It's a big deal if you do it all the time. Yeah. And all Absolutely. of a sudden you have all these preferences and you have no outside expectations for things that really don't exist. They're just produced by you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you just have preferences. So yeah, I, I would prefer, prefer her to have been nice to me instead of mean. Yeah. But eh. yeah. What yeah. does it matter to me? Cause yeah. I control my own happiness and my own feelings. Yeah. For instance, if you'd like to become more physically fit, you could say to yourself, I would like to do 20 minutes of cardio per day. Then when you do it, you will have accomplished what you'd set out to do and you'll feel happier. Dr. Parker's fundamental three is don't get worried and stressed out, make a plan. 
And this is good for those of you who really worry a lot, who really anxious a lot. And basically the feelings of worry and anxiety in excess don't do anything at all positive for you. They just make your present moment much more miserable. The, the, the trigger word is, uh, trigger words, what if. What so if? This has to do with anxiety. We say what ifs for like just about everything in life. What if I end up with no money in my life? Yes. And I exactly. retire with nothing. I'm living on the streets. What if? Ah. Yeah. yeah. And I call them thought spirals. They'll, most yeah. thought spirals start with a what if. Really, these, these what if scenarios to your brain are as though you're living them. What we're seeing is just in our brain. What you're thinking yeah. is also in your brain. You can make vivid pictures of what's going on. You can think through that conversation uh, with so-and-so playing the what if scenario. Mm -hmm. It's as, as though you're going through it. Like, when you think about what if I die and, or my kids, you know, fall into a vat of maple syrup and they get yeah. sucked under, <laughs> your heart rate goes up. Like you're having yeah. a physical response. You're, you're experiencing it. Yeah. And so most of the time you have to have a physical reaction or stop to it. Mm -hmm. So first thing you want to do is take a deep breath. That really helps. I mean, you, you, you can feel your heartbeat, heart rate lowering. Yeah, it does. It really does. Lowering. Okay. So now I'm in a state where mm -hmm. I can actually have some rational thought. And so you think, what if that happened? Okay. Oftentimes it's not nearly as bad as you think. I mean, so often yeah. we play out all these things like, what if so-and-so says this and then they're all nasty and mean and then this and then that. And then when you finally go do it, it's not even a thing. Most of what we worry yeah. about never happens. It just never happens. And what Dr. Parker says to do instead is first, write the worry down. For instance, the worry could be, what if I can't pay my bills? Write that down. Number two, you rewrite that sentence. And instead of saying, what if I don't have enough money to pay my bills, you change that to, I'm concerned that I won't have enough money to pay my bills. And then step three is to make a plan for if that negative future does happen. For instance, what would happen if I couldn't pay my bills? The answers might be, I could ask for an extension. I could negotiate a lower payment plan. I could ask my family to help me out, or I could sell my Xbox to get more money. I don't think I have an Xbox, but that gives you some idea. And step four of this plan is that instead of worrying about if you can't pay your bills, ask what you would prefer to happen in the future. For example, instead of worrying you can't pay your bills, you might say, I would like to be financially secure and have three months of income set aside for a rainy day. And step five is to make a positive plan to achieve the better outcome. For example, saving a certain amount of money each month, taking lunches instead of buying them at the restaurant, that sort of thing. You think, what is the likelihood of this scenario? Mm -hmm. Okay. Usually it's low, but even if it's not, you go, okay, ask yourself, what do you want? Okay. What if I lose my job? Well, I really want to keep my job. Okay. So next step is make a plan. Like, yeah. Okay. So how do I get my job? Well, my boss wanted this and that. So why don't I do that tomorrow? And then I'll do this the next day, mm -hmm. and the other on Thursday, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it's, you make a plan and now you don't have to worry about it. And Dr. Parker talks about, you don't play the what if scenario. What if I get a flat tire? Yeah. No, you, you know that, okay, I have a plan. I would call AAA or yeah. I would change my tire because it's in my trunk. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that because you yeah. have a plan for it. And Dr. Parker's fourth fundamental is to change what you don't want to what you do want. And this basically refers to positive or negative thinking. Anytime you catch yourself saying a negative statement like, I don't want to gain weight, change your statement to, I want to be a slender and healthy person. The fourth fundamental is the final one. And what is that? And it's what is it um, basically positive thinking. I'm not, don't, can't, yeah. won't. Those are the trigger words for number four. I know my default was to have a negative thought. Oh, really? Usually, Usually the glass is half empty. Right. But with Dr. Parker, an empty glass is just ready to be filled. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, I like that. it's all in how you think about things. And pretty much every negative statement has a positive alternative. Well, the batter at the baseball game, don't strike out. Don't strike out. Don't strike out. Yeah. What does the batter do? He strikes out. Mm -hmm. Home run. 
home run, you know, single, yeah. double, whatever it is, it's got a positive way yeah. to do the same thing, right? Yes, absolutely. And certainly focusing on the negative. Usually you have Doesn't a negative help. outcome. Yeah. Right. There are two ways to look at everything, basically, mm -hmm. and, you know, choose to look at the positive. And I will say that although these four fundamental ideas are very, very simple, it does take some real practice to incorporate the ideas into your life. I admire Colin so much because a couple of years ago, he went through a negative personal experience. At least some would say it was negative, but he was able to use these four fundamentals to really turn the situation around and triumph even through difficult times. Like I went through a divorce and two people go through divorce, they could have totally different perspectives um, and experiences because of you know the way they're thinking about it. You, you seem know. to go through them in a very positive way. So what was your mindset that caused you to get through it so well? Yeah, I mean, it was positive thinking. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. hey, this, you know, this sucks. My, my ex-wife said, hey, I, I don't want to be with you anymore. Which I can't imagine that, actually. That's, I think she's an idiot. That's a thing to hear, right? <laughs> but, yes. okay recognizing that our marriage wasn't that great it's like okay i got an opportunity to be on my own mm -hmm. do what i want meet people meet new people and life is good mm -hmm. um, versus the guy who says oh man my wife left me this is terrible i'll never find anybody it's the same situation both going through divorce but former way yeah. to look at it is much more productive and leads to a happier, happier person and better outcomes, really. Well, and I watched you go through it and I really couldn't believe the grace with which you got through that. When it was during COVID, you remodeled your basement and you started working out and look how that worked out. Yeah. And so why did you do those things during that period? Well, I think being busy helps, mm -hmm. you know, for mm -hmm. me, but um, also it was just stuff that I, I wanted to do, but never had the time yeah. to do. And being divorced, you have more time. Yeah. You took lemons and made lemonade. Yeah. And if you've had difficulties in your life and you've used some of these types of positive mindsets to improve your situation, I hope you'll share information about your situation in the comment section below the video because that way we can help each other. Okay, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And my thought for the day is really a simple one and it involves something I'm doing, just four simple words that have really been helping me change a negative mindset to something more positive. It is for those times when you're just going through your day and for no reason at all, you just think, oh, I feel kind of down, I feel kind of blah, that sort of negative experience. And my magic words are the words, this too shall pass, this too shall pass. And I've been using those four words for about the last week, every day, whenever I get the sense that a negative feeling is coming along, this too shall pass. And really, it almost immediately lifts my mood. So friends, just for today, as you're going through your day today, if you come upon a challenge and you just kind of go, oh my gosh, I don't know how to handle that. I'm kind of depressed. I'm kind of down. Remember those simple words and say them out loud to yourself. This too shall pass. And before you know it, you'll probably be feeling much more optimistic. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.